I wanted to here in a couple of minutes tell you my uh, favorite new camera of all time, and it should be no surprise, I've really been waiting literally 10 years for this camera to come down the road. But let's first talk about the three types of future-proof digital cameras. To the best extent, a digital camera can be future-proof, and there really are only three classes. And within those three, uh, there's one that uh, sits above all else, and that's not a particular brand or model, but a type of camera. Those three arenas are a digital Leica camera, and I'm no fan of overpriced Leica cameras. No fan at all, but I mean, that's a fact. Number two, flagship Nikon cameras like the D4, the D3, the D5 does not qualify. But the D3, D3S, D4, D4S, um, the third type is medium format. Medium format holds its value better than any other type of digital camera. The reason for that is there's been a very few improvements in medium format. Number two, the output is absolutely incredible. You know, the Pentax 645Z and the Mamiya Leaf, which by the way, use the exact same sensor as found in the uh, Fujifilm GFX 50S and the Fujifilm GFXR, those cameras are quite old. I actually kind of laugh when uh, I read some article reviews, specifically like the new Verge article, but there's a lot of um, idiotic comments like you'll find on Diaper and P Review, which I kind of say uh, humorously, that will uh, make the statement that the sensor found in the current GFX uh, 51 megapixel cameras is showing its age. Compared to what? The dynamic range is unmatched. The image quality is absolutely crotch-melting perfection. Let me repeat that for you if you didn't hear me the first time. Crotch-melting perfection. Tougher than woodpecker lips. Finer than a Swedish supermodel, or any supermodel for that matter. Fine. What is it? What, is you, what are you going to compare it to? Have you ever seen like a full, uncompressed... 300 megabyte TIFF file um, from a Fujifilm GFX camera. I've made more than a few videos and let people take a look at it. And of course, 99 times out of 100, the answer is, oh my God. Um, I'm hearkening to, and I'm gonna talk, talk about here very, very quickly, my current favorite camera of all time, even though it's not fast and it doesn't have a buffer rate, but that's what my X-T3 is for, or my Nikon D850, or my Nikon D500 is for. Uh, the Verge, um, on January the 24th, and you always know when someone doesn't know what the hell medium format cameras are, or what they're made for. They're made for one thing only. Ultimate Image Output. U-I-O. Ultimate Image Output. That's all they're made for. They're kind of like gigantic earth movers that are used in like coal mines and copper mines. These giant vehicles, like each tire costs like $100,000. Each tire is like $100,000. They get like two miles to the gallon. The top speed is like 20 miles per hour. You know what? They do one thing and they do it really, really well. They haul a crap load of dirt. No one is bitching about those particular type of earth movers being slow or getting abysmally horrific gas mileage, nor about uh, the tires being $100,000 a piece. In other words, you replace all four tires before. And you see, they do one thing and they do it perfectly. And that's exactly what medium format is. Um, I've actually been out almost every day since arriving in Florida and I'll return back here uh, next Thursday. So I'll be back in a week. And of course, I've used it extensively before then, and I was one of the first people to get my hands on one, and I even uploaded the receipt showing that I paid full retail price for it. I uploaded that receipt on Instagram. And here it is. The Fujifilm GFX 50R. I've waited 10 years for this camera. I noticed in the uh, Verge review, which I don't blame them, they're, they're a bunch of tech, geek, uh, tech geeks, and they said, this is very, very funny, they said that... Uh, the GFX 50R, it's got uh, uh, slow autofocus compared to like an Nikon D850 or an XT3, which it does. By the way, the GFX cameras of all the medium format cameras out there has the fastest autofocus of any medium format camera, but 
relative to a sports section wildlife camera, the autofocus is slow. And then, of course, they complained about the fact that it only has a three frames per second. Oh my god. Holy shit. What am I going to do? That's just horrible. This camera is not made for hardcore sports action and wildlife. It's not designed for that. It's designed for insanely serious output, ultimate image output, fashion, product photography, commercial, business photography, fashion photography, landscape, architecture. The image output, a full-blown uncompressed um, TIFF file, will knock you off your socks. If you're honest to yourself, I mean, you can't look at it and go, holy shit, look at the dynamic range. Oh my god. Holy crap. This is... Ugh. I can crop the hell out of this shot and it still looks better than anything else I have. That's exactly what it's designed for. It's not meant to be super fast, even though it's the fastest autofocusing medium format camera out there. Not only that, do you know how much of a Mia Leaf Credo costs? Do you know? It has the exact same sensor in it as this camera. What is it currently? $18,000? I almost bought one of those about six years ago. I have, literally, and this is no exaggeration, because people on YouTube are very fond of exaggerating on photography channels. I've been waiting about 10 years for a compact, relatively inexpensive, and for medium format, $4,500 is insanely inexpensive. Boom. By the way, my buddy Sal, who does street photography, he uh, got a GFX uh, camera off uh, some questions from me and some recommendations, and he's about to be featured in a medium format magazine. I forget which one it is. His uh, medium format uh, street photography was recently featured in a, a prominent uh, photo gallery. Um, congratulations to Sal. I've seen some of his amazing work. Um, people were applauding, and they kept talking about the dynamic range and the detail, and I think he, I could be mistaken, but many of his prints were rather huge. They were hanging on the gallery wall, and most of the people, of course, the people that are looking at the shots in the gallery, I mean, they don't know one damn thing from another. They just know, damn, look at the detail, look at the tonality. They don't know what, most of those people, 99% of them, if not 100%, they don't know what the hell medium format is compared to a full-frame sensor or a crop sensor, but they know what the hell smacks him in the face when they look at it at the gallery wall where his work is hanging? That's exactly what it is. Nobody that buys a medium format camera, unless, you know, they're just filthy rich and they have all the money in the world to burn, has any sort of bizarre delusions about medium format being really fast autofocus or having a huge buffer. Because they don't. They're for slowing down and getting ultimate image. If you could travel back in time, it's like, listen, we're going to give you a time pass. You're going to visit a uh, hundred of the most famous people throughout history. You got one camera and one lens to take with you. Now, if you had a brain, what the hell do you think you would take with you? It's like, you get a chance to take a picture of the hundred most famous people in history. And the only thing we have of them, have of those people at best is like a grainy ass crap photo so we want you to take a few portrait shots of these people and then come back bring the sd card with you and the camera what camera are you going to take this is a situation of course it's a completely fantastical situation but i mean this drives home the point you would be taking a medium format period um i've had so much fun i've had so many comments the past few days i haven't been you know, posting anything jaw-dropping image-wise, a couple of them I think are really, really nice. But I mean, the ultimate image output is undeniable. It's it's as close to perfection as you're going to get. It's medium format, for God's sakes. Do you know how much better a uh, $60,000 um, uh, Phase 1 looks versus the 51 megapixel? Yeah, it's indistinguishable at a 20 by 30 standing three feet away. It's indistinguishable. Um, the 100 megapixel GFX is coming, I know, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I actually thought about this video before making it because when you make a statement like this one in this video that, hey, my favorite camera in the world now is bum 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 bum. People are gonna beat me over the head with it. They're gonna like, oh my God, and this guy's talking about a slow ass camera 
with a three shot for, per second buffer being his favorite camera in the world. I've been waiting 10 years for this camera. The reason why this is my favorite camera in the world, not because it's new, because the exact same sensor and engine is found in the GFX 50S, which I also happen to own. It's because the image output is incredible. It's, uh, it's, it's unmatched, unless you want to spend $50,000 on a phase one. But that $50,000 phase one is huge. It's, it's not, I don't know if you had your hands on one of those, no offense to phase one. I don't know if you had your hands on one of those really expensive beasts, but they're not built all that incredibly tough, nor are they meant to be. They're uh, like house cats, kind of like the house cat doesn't leave, you know, it's a pampered little kitty cat. Phase one cameras are really house cats. Someone's going to attack me for that, but they are. Um, they're not, you know, rough and tumble cameras meant to be taken out into the wild for landscape photography. This, however, is. And this is the fastest medium format camera on Earth. The GFX series R, so. I don't make this video lightly when I say this is my favorite camera in the world. I literally do mean that, and I'm never going to regret this statement. It's, it's not possible. And I'll repeat myself for a fourth time. I have been, and do mean, that I've been waiting 10 years for this camera. A compact, relatively inexpensive. By the way, the camera body on the GFX 50R, despite what it looks like, it's actually extremely lightweight. Anybody that's picked one up is like, without a lens mount, and I was like, damn, this camera's pretty lightweight. And it is. It's a lot more lightweight than it looks. So, kudos to Fujifilm. Um... Um, been taking a lot of shots of the GFX uh, 50R lately. A lot. So, catch you all. I'm still going to make videos till return, but I mean, I'll, I'll be back in uh, a week. Thanks for watching. I hope you like these videos. If you do, you always click the link below. Send me any questions. I had a nice half hour long conversation last night with a gentleman talking about lenses and how to set things up. So, let me know if I could help. I like being helpful. Okay? Peace out, Girl Scout from sunny South Florida. Bye.